Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty I YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be using the leftovers from this card that I recently shared to create a new shaker card. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to make. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. First of all, you might have noticed that today I was not on camera. Over the weekend, I shared a poll on my community tab, which this is what my community tab looks like and the poll. And I mentioned how lately I've just felt like I have to get ready to make cards or to craft just so I can make that short intro. So I wanted to know your feelings on hands-only intros and maybe mixing it up. If you would go and answer that poll, I would really appreciate it. I do still hope to do some on-camera intros, but let me tell you that this is much easier to just come down here and get started. Speaking of getting started, let me tell you about my card today. On Friday, I shared how I made this shaker card for the recent There's a Stamp for That Challenge, and I ended up with a leftover die cut, some scraps of the paper, and a whole bunch of the shaker mix. So I thought that I would stop by and show you how I'm going to use some of this up. If you want to see the video where I made this, I will have that linked in the description box below. Before I get started on the process, I'll share with you the products that I plan to use. If I add anything during the voiceover, I will make sure to let you know. Now speaking of voiceover, if I ever leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. If you have already seen this video, you know that my shaker mix was made using Diamond Dots Freestyle, which I picked up at Joanne. I have to say that I am headed back there to get some more colors. I will also be using this Polaroid die cut or this instant photo die. I honestly have no idea who made this. I usually try to put on the back of the company, but I know I've tried to find it in the past, this exact one, and I can't. I'll measure this and see if I can find a similar one, and if I can, I will link that below. Since I used the negative of the high here, it left me with a high die cut, so I'm going to try to use this in some way today on my card. And then I also got out a scrap of blue cardstock that I thought matched the blue stripe in the pattern paper. Let's get crafty! To get started on today's card, I'm going to be doing a little bit of cutting. The first thing I'm going to do is cut my piece of blue cardstock down to four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall. This way the blue will fill the card front completely. Once that's done, I bring in that scrap of striped pattern paper and I cut it to four and a quarter inches wide by one inch tall. But because my fingers will get in the way of the cutting bar, I do bring in a little scrap of scotch blue removable tape to hold that in place while I cut it. Next, I brought in my cuddle bug and I'm going to be die cutting the striped paper using that instant photo frame. Now, I could have taped this in place to ensure that it was straight, but I just went ahead and carefully placed it on my plates and then ran that through the cuddle bug. Once I had the frame die cut, I held it up to my blue background and decided that it looked a little bit plain, that I needed some more texture on that. So I decided I would use some embossing folders. For the blue cardstock, I brought in this diagonal stripe folder from Joanne and I ran that through my cuddle bug. For the die cut high, I brought in the same dots embossing folder from the original card and I placed the word and the dot on the eye in that folder and ran it through as well. Off camera, I got out one of my white top fold card bases and I adhered my blue card stock to the front of this. 
Once I had that adhered in place, I pulled out my Duralar pad and I grabbed a scrap from the original card that I just left in there. I add adhesive to the back of my instant photo frame and then I carefully place the window sheet on the back of this. Once I have that in place and nice and flattened, I then got out a pair of scissors and I just cut off the excess clear material. Once again, I played around a little bit with the layout and I decided where my high would go and then where the little dot on the eye would go and I went ahead and adhered that in place. Now there is a reason for this and you'll see why once I pull out my foam tape to make my shaker window. Speaking of foam tape, I went ahead and got out both of my rolls. I will be using the quarter inch wide tape and my three quarter inch wide roll. The first thing I'm going to do is take the quarter inch wide roll and make a frame around the outside edge of the window. The width of this tape is perfect for this die cut. You'll notice it stays right within that frame so you can't see it from the front. Because I don't want my shaker bits to fall behind the dot of the eye, I cut off a little piece of the foam tape and placed it behind that on the window. Next, I wanted to make something to go behind my window to hold those shaker bits in, so I got out a ruler to measure the window and then I cut this scrap of white cardstock into a two and three quarter inch square. To avoid my diamond dots bouncing around later when I pull the release on the tape, I went ahead and pulled that now and I added some of the shaker bits into that opening. Once I had enough in there, I got out my piece of white cardstock and placed that on the back making sure that it was nice and tight and then I just shake it around to loosen up those diamond dots and make sure everything is flowing freely. Next I pulled in my wider roll of foam tape and I cut a piece to place on the back bottom of my die cut piece. Once I have that in place, I pulled in my ATG and added some adhesive to the back of the cardstock square. Once I had the adhesive on the back of this piece, I then placed it onto my card front. Then it was time to get my die cut high placed on the front of the card as well. Because some of the die cut will hang off the instant photo frame, I pulled back in my skinnier foam tape, the quarter inch wide roll, and I added some of that to the back of the high die cut. Every once in a while I did stop just to make sure where I would need to put that foam. Once I had some of that on there, I added more adhesive with my ATG to the places that would stick to the front of the shaker window. Once that was all in place, it's time to finish the card. And I'm going to do that by adding some of those diamond dots to the card front. I got out my art glitter glue and I placed five drops of glue on the card front and then I went in and I placed different colored gems onto each of those dots. Now I will tell you I have found with this the less glue the better. If you have a larger pile of glue it's harder to get the diamond dot to stick to where you want it on the card front. So just keep that in mind if you're going to give that a try. I let that glue dry for about five minutes and then I brought in that scrap of striped paper that I had cut. This is going to go at the bottom of the inside of the card. And here is a look at the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made this quick and easy card using some leftovers. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.